Welcome everybody to co-production lessons from Oxfordshire. Uh, this is a webinar where we're going to sort of summarise the programme of work that Oxfordshire has done around co-production. We're going to talk about some of the lessons learned and also some of the key messages from the peer-led evaluation. And so I'm really pleased to welcome my two co-contributors, but I'll just first introduce myself. So my name is Pete Fleischman. I'm the Social Care Institute's Head of Co-Production, and I'm here with... I'm Jo Barnicote. I co-chair the TMARC Co-Production Board, alongside the Director of Adult Social Care within Oxfordshire, and I'm a parent carer for a 23-year-old lad who has severe learning difficulties. And hi, I'm Danny Woodbridge, so my job is uh, co-production lead at Oxfordshire County Council. Apologies for the acronym on the slide there. Um, but that's not the whole of me. I, um, I've, I've been a carer my whole life. I was a young carer. Um, I've got three children, two of whom have a disability, and uh, I have an invisible disability myself. So before we get into it, we wanted to just talk a little bit about um, Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire County Council, just to give you a sense of the, the kind of place that it is. Um, so, it's got, oh yeah, next slide please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's got a large population, um, nearly seven, 700,000. Uh, it's largely urban, uh, largely rural, but there's quite a lot of more urban towns. So it is quite an affluent place, but there's also Sort of like it is very diverse. A lot, it's very diverse and there's a lot of uh, deprivation. Um, I think I'll pass over to Danny and Joe to talk about what it's, yeah. what it's really like because they, well, they really know what it's like. Well, we live there. Yes, exactly. Um, so the council's made up as a two tier council. Um, so there's a city council and Oxfordshire County Council with five districts and 317 uh, town and parish councils. Uh, it's mainly conservative-led, and as Pete's already said, it's quite a rural place to live. Um, so there are issues with transport for people who, who are in isolated areas, especially receiving social care. Um, there are workforce issues as well. It's, it's quite an expensive place to live, um, and it's growing really rapidly. Um, more and more people are using it as a, as a commuter place to live. It's a very attractive place to live to lots of people. Um, as me and Joe do, getting the train in today, it's very, very quick. I used to live in London, and it takes me the same amount of time to get into central London living in Oxfordshire as it did when I lived in London. So <laughs> It is quick, and it isn't just the university that everybody's heard of. It's got a fairly huge... Economy, mostly university publishing, huge science parks, and of course, not forgetting Mr. Village. <laughs> Great, okay. Yes, so I just wanted to give a bit of background first on about where this all started. So it really started with quite a small piece of work that um, Oxfordshire County Council asked Sky to do. Um, and so we ran, I think it was four half-day workshops, first with, um, uh, with staff only, and then we managed to persuade the people who were organising it that it would be a good idea to invite some people who use services and some carers to join, I think, the last couple of uh, workshops. And um, at the last workshop, we agreed seven shifts that we thought needed to happen if, if Oxfordshire was going to sort of become a more co-productive sort of place. Um, and they were um, a senior level commitment to co-production, a co-produced training program, uh, establishing a co-production board, um, putting some money into it, having a kind of written agreement that said what the sort of terms of reference and how things would work, um, that there needed to be some uh, early wins, like pi or sort of piloting of uh, co-production, and then the, the whole thing should be evaluated so we could find out what kind of impact it was having. And so we left that report with Oxfordshire, and to be honest, thought that we would never hear much more about anything co-productive at Oxfordshire. Um, but I think it was about a year or so later they got back in touch with us and said, no, we're starting this program. Um, of, when we really want to take co-production seriously, we're going to employ a team, we want Sky to kind of be, um, support us, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of 
commitment and enthusiasm about this. And um, so that's really the beginning of the story. That's the kind of background. So it's worth adding that you know that's also building on um, a history of lots of co-production happening in Oxfordshire. You know, the voluntary community sector and even staff within the council were, you know, very passionate about it. And there's lots of pockets of bits of co-production that have happened for many years. Um, but this was a, the, the the big shift was this you know, senior leadership actually taking it very seriously and making quite a statement, quite a commitment to it. Um, so I think that's that was kind yeah. of why it became so interesting and, um, yeah, from where we're at now. Yeah, so kind of it's over to you two to describe, I think, to Danny to yeah. describe the programme. Okay. Uh, can we have the next slide? Fab. So there's our lovely graffiti wall from our festival, which we'll talk about a bit later, and of course the logo, so co-production Oxfordshire. Um, so what we're going to talk about in the next um, <clears throat> sort of 10, 15 minutes or so is uh, a bit about the, the programme aims and how they came about, what some of those key projects, so uh, Pete's just referred to um, some of those shifts that, that, we, that we planned to do, so where have we got to with that, um, and where are we headed next really. Um, we'll also touch on some of the events that, that, we, that, that have happened, um, so some of the shared learning, some of the tools and things that we've developed and co-produced together as part of this learning and growing together to make this work. Um, we'll also touch on what, what it looks like to try and make it work in practice because otherwise this can get very theoretical but actually trying to implement something quite radically different in, in a local authority and uh, health and social care is, is is not straightforward. So we'll talk about what that looks like, how, how you begin to make it work in practice and what some of the challenges are and maybe how you start to think about overcoming them. Um, we'll also um, reflect a bit on the evaluation um, that um, has been, well, co-evaluation that's been uh, co-produced with everybody involved in the work. Um, and we'll also mention the report that Sky has put together um, at the end of our work with them um, and our training and such. And then we'll have some questions. Uh, we'll open up to questions at the end. But if anyone's kind of needs to stop us to clarify something uh, or if we accidentally use jargon, please tell us. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, try and, uh, we'll try and do our best. So over to Joe. Next slide, please. Thanks, Jim. Believe it or not, this definition took quite a while to work out. When we all started on the board, we had no idea what real co-production was. Everyone had their own opinions. And gradually, this was evaluated, discussed, and the board, with considerable assistance from the champions, came up with this definition. The emphasis is on working together as equals. Each side brings a different perspective to the table, of which the other possibly has no real idea. Working together, honestly, Making the decisions together saves time, money, and much heartache. Communication is, of course, the key. Beautifully said, Jo. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's our definition of co-production. And as Jo said, it, um, it was co-produced like everything else that we do. We try to live and breathe uh, co-production. It's about role modelling it and... Um, uh, otherwise, otherwise you, you're not doing it properly. So, um, so co-production Oxfordshire. So, what is that? Um, it's made up of um, a, a, a team-up co-production board, and uh, our co-production champions, and we also have a wider, a growing co-production network um, of people locally and nationally who just want to keep in touch with us um, and share, um, you know, share learning, come to our events, and. Uh, we want to keep in touch with you as well. And we also have a co-production team as well, and we sit inside the council, and there's three of us. We sit in Adult Social Care Commissioning, um, but we do work with everybody across the whole council and increasingly with our health colleagues as well. Um, so the co-production board and our champions um, are made up of people who we call experts by experience. So that's people who have experience of either using or caring for somebody or both who uses health and social care services. Um, and they sit alongside people who work in health and social care and um, we sit together to 
problem solve, what are the issues, how can we do this better, and we're essentially looking at helping people learn about what co-production actually is in practice, how you could use it, how you can embed it properly so it becomes the usual way of working. Um, we, we said the ambition at the beginning was that we would eventually not need to talk about co-production because it was just the way we work. Um, so we identify opportunities, they just they come up naturally in the discussion um, or because of whatever is on the agenda at the time. We make recommendations for change, um, we support people, so we, we check and challenge um, but in a, a constructive, friendly way and we provide a lot of coaching and support and uh, of course we have uh, training that we run um, and it's about trying to make sure that people are working shoulder to shoulder, so challenging decisions, asking questions, looking at what co-production best practice is. I mean, recently in one of our meetings, there's there's always a question, is, is that is that how we should be doing it? Um, and so we, we will debate that on the board and come up with our definition of what we think will work best. Um, so can we move on to the next slide? Yeah. Great. So the ambition really um, is that the co-production board and, well co-production Oxfordshire which is the board, the champions, the team and, and, and lots of other people who, who are just passionate about this way of working, um, we, we just want this to become how, central to how we work and the council are increasingly um, doing this and adapting and adopting it um, and that could be so we've got um, a, a big program of work in adult social care um, using strength-based practice so our frontline social workers and their teams um, looking at actually how, how can we work with individuals um, to get to get the best results and, and really build on people's strengths rather than looking at uh, a problem or a deficit model um, and then the co-production work uh, seeps into all teams across the council really now um, and even pl planning in place because we said how much Oxfordshire is growing, we've got this lots of housing being built, lots more people moving into the area and we obviously want to make sure that anything we do is is considering working alongside and with the, the people that are going to be affected with it. Um, so that's the ambition really. Uh, Move on to the next slide. Fab. Any questions come up yet? <laughs> so some of the key things we've done so far, um, there are actually lots of pieces of work, but that we we pick on these ones because they're 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 a good example of pieces of work that were really really well uh, co-produced or a, a really good attempt at co-production. Um, involving a lot of people, so our older people's strategy was co-produced um, in quite a short time frame as well, and it involved an awful lot of people. Um, and our moving into adulthood piece of work uh, was very, very um, well co-produced with with a really good core team of people um, who are affected by, um, you know, transitioning from uh, children's social care to adult social care. And all of this, this work has created a legacy, so any future pieces of work, this will, you know, we can refer back to this. And um, the, the reason that these are so powerful, these pieces of work, is that it showed us that even though we didn't quite know how to do co-production, there isn't a model for co-production. It's just a different way of working. It just means you have a different team around you, but the principles are always the same. The values are essentially what underpin it. Um, and it's about having a different culture and a different way of working. Um, the grants panel is another good example. Um, it was the first time that councillors sat alongside uh, our residents, um, people using health and social care services to actually make decisions about how to spend some money. So that was a big shift in, um, in thinking and in, in, in behaviour as well. And then the next slide. So there's lots of stuff coming up next. This is really only a small example um, of the stuff we're looking at. Um, so we've got a fostering piece of work. Um, people in council working alongside parents and um, foster carers looking at you know a, a new um, way of looking at it making sure that we're considering that talking to each other there's a piece of work that's already underway looking at uh, 
much working with carers, a co-designers co-design group was set up, um, and that's that's really that's that's really interesting. We don't quite know what's going to come out of that yet, but that's all underway. Um, the moving into adulthood project will be moving into the next phase. Um, that group of people presented to our senior leadership team a recommendation of what transition should look like and that's being turned into a business model so that's one to watch and then we've got transport a whole review of uh, transport of uh, with uh, working with waste schools voluntary sector um, all sorts of other uh, areas of work and we're hoping that we'll be, we'll be just growing and it's basically just rippling out uh, across across the whole county more and more people wanting to work with us um, i'm just looking at the there's lots and lots of comments coming in i'm trying to look at my <laughs> slides and and the comments at the same time great okay yeah, the next uh, and of course we'll have um uh, we're having a, another festival this year as well so other events coming up so just keep an eye on yeah okay uh, is it over to you joe so this program of work started with adult social care and that the board then noticed the challenges of why not include health, education, because everything is linked and therefore it's quite complex. So we approached the transport department due to various problems within school transport and semi transport, not really realising how big the department it was and we now have school transport, semi transport, adult social care transport who are now on board with the co-production method. And the model is hopefully being wheeled out about many more projects, nothing to do with adult social care. The obvious next department is children's services, which although is harder in many ways, can still use the co-production te technique to produce good services. The clinical commission group, impossible to separate from adult social care, so this is also an obvious partner. Communication with the end user makes life so much easier. So, from the board's perspective, there is a shift in the understanding of the complexity of the interaction within the, all the different departments and services. And we are desperately trying to communicate better between all um, providers and the end users. Shall I, shall I come back on a question now? Probably What's wait the question? There was a question we, about the older people's Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I can do some of that, I, actually, because yeah. somebody, Lydia, asked... Um, how we got them involved, didn't we? Yeah, shall I? Shall I? Okay. <laughs> Should we can both do it. Yeah. Um, so the, the question is from Lydia, and it says, how do you go about involving so many people in the older people's strategy? It's a really good question, because I think one of the big challenges when you're trying to do co-production um, on a piece of work that affects so many people, because when you, try to, when you say, right, we're going to do co-production, the first question you ask is, who is affected by this? So if everybody is affected by it, because our older, our older population is a lot of people, and effectively we are all ageing. So ageing affects all of us. Um, and we said right at the start that, you know, actually everybody needs to be involved in this. So it, you, you can't possibly get everybody around the table all at once. So we just, we were very creative with it. So our co-production model for this piece of work was essentially a lot of very different things so that that was um, attending meetings getting feedback directly from people interviewing people we did a very large survey uh what's joe's um, yeah. went into the nursing home as much as dementia groups yeah. um to discuss with families of people in nursing homes and residential care homes yeah so an awful lot of uh, just different ways to reach out to people and, yeah. and, and get and gather their voices. We also had a core um, kind of reference group or whatever you like to call it. I don't like to give these things labels. A group, uh, labels a group of people that were working together essentially on the, you know, how we're going to co-produce this in this short time frame. Um, and there was a large kind of engagement event at the end as well, where everything was pulled together to agree on what the strategy should look like. So that was what that model of, of co-production looked like, as opposed to the moving into adulthood one, which is more like uh, a very small group of people who um, were directly affected by transition and they work together throughout the whole project from beginning to end. Yes, there were many more yeah. in the other ones. So. So Co-production, can you have the next slide please? <laughs> so, Co-production Festival is a celebration of our achievements so far because it was never going to be easy 
changing the culture of such an established system. So the festival opened everyone's eyes to what can be done, has been done, and a way forward. Danny, do you want to add anything to this? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, it's, it's quite a busy job this doing this webinar. There's all these questions <laughs> flying at us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the festival was a really, really fabulous day. Um, it, 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 it just felt so uplifting, and people talked about it for ages afterwards because it was it was a real coming together of people on a you know on a level just to really celebrate the you know the underlying principles of co-production. It was very creative, and there were some brilliant workshops. We had some fantastic speakers from uh, from Wales, Wales Co-Production Network, from Co-Create. Uh, David Boyle came and spoke. Fabulous, David. And um, we had um, all sorts of uh, workshops uh, from People's Voice Media on community reporting, uh, nonviolent communication, our local uh, uh, self advocacy uh, learning disability group, My Life, My Choice, they, they ran a workshop as well. Um, Social Care Institute for Excellence ran a workshop, of course, <laughs> um, and one of our um, commissioners ran a workshop as well. And so we had dance and art, and so it was just a lovely event to celebrate and learn about, learn from each other and really feel, I think what people really took away from it, and I think often it happens at these events, is you, you're not alone, you you know, something that you're passionate about and you believe in, because this is, this is talking about real change in health mm. and social care, and we, we all want this, and so when you come together in a group, you feel more powerful, I think, and it really gives you motivation. Well, so. I think people learn from enjoying themselves as well, you know, that sort of through dance and music and participating in things, and uh, Sky also has run the co-production festivals and we have, often have comedians and disabled comedians and that seems to be a really good way of people just not realising that they're, that they're learning a lot of stuff from it. That's right and of course Sky started National Co-Production Week um, in, the, in, the, in, in England, uh, when was it, three, four years ago? Um, and we're, so we're holding another festival this year, it's on the 7th of July. Um, and it's free to attend and it's a fabulous day, you get a wonderful lunch as well. Um, so if you're interested in that, do keep your eyes peeled on Twitter uh, and our website um, because we'll, we'll be sending out further details about that and how you can sign up for that later on. Yeah, the co-production week is 6th to the 10th of July. Yep. Do you have something to add, Joe? Not to the festival, but I was going to ask, answer Sonia's question now who's asked how, um, the difference between asking a, after a, a care act assessment. Um, we're changing the way we do care act assessments to the strength-based assessment, so it's a very positive on what people can do, not asking how was it for you. So the whole assessment is now being redesigned strength-based, and it's in very early days, but we've got good feedback so far. Yeah, and that's one of our champions. And it's, it that. is actually brilliant, because... My son has literally just had having his transition care act assessment and being more positive about it and listening and communicating together. And right. my voice counts rather than just a social worker. So yeah, it is quite good that one. Just to, so if people are aware of putting your if people put phone numbers or emails on the message stream, everyone can see it, you know, it's going <laughs> public. So just to bear that in, in mind when you do. Great. Next slide, please. So, the co-production handbook launch. This, in some ways, is our best achievement so far. It gives guidance on how to, how to start the process. It can be very daunting at the start of a project to know that you have to co-produce it. But how? This booklet gives an insight to where to begin and, in some ways, simplifies the process. Keep it close, follow the guidelines, and it will all come together. The handbook was completely co-produced and is a collection of everyone's learning and shared experiences. It is just guidance. There's no model for co-production. It's shared freely on the Oxfordshire County Council website because co-production is all about supporting each other and everyone. We're not saying it's absolutely the way. We are all still learning and developing. The handbook will evolve over time. It is a collection of our best practice guidance. Oh, Thanks, Joe. Yeah, that was an, also a really wonderful event, and um, uh, I can't remember the, the uh, figures off the top of my head, but lots of people have downloaded it from the website, and um, of course it's, it's not just 
our work it's it's truly co-produced it's a real collection of, of all that learning um, and when we launched it we, we didn't know how, how people would respond but we had hundreds of people it's we? very positive mm. the response we had from that and actually it's very useful and there's a photo of our CEO there signing up so making her co-production pledge on our sticky wall so <laughs> fabulous <laughs> um, so it's on our website it's if you go on the, if you just google Oxfordshire County Council or co-production Oxfordshire and handbook um, you should be able to find it but Steve uh, might even be able to put up the link to it um, on our on our web page um, should we move on to the next slide or are there any questions that people want next to pick slide. on them okay. So this slide is, there's a lot on here, um, and um, it's, it's the hard question really, it's how to make it work in practice, because co-production is actually quite simple, um, it's just working together, That's, um, one of our board members came up with that, he was struggling for a little while to get his head around this concept of co-production, he thought it was to do with film, uh, rightly so, it actually is, if you, if you look up the term definition, but how to make it work in practice is actually quite complicated, and especially um, in something as hierarchical and um, complex as a local authority or a council. Um, but there are some key ingredients, and the, f the, th the three main key ing ingredients really are having that senior leadership driving it, and if you're working in a hierarchical organisation, that's the only way that you can really um, get buy-in and, and get things done if you've got the senior leadership, because that gives permission and um, the word permission comes up a lot for me and just um, without it um, it's very difficult to get anything done but it also means that you get the right support and resources in place as well if you need it. Um, also staff really do need to feel that support through uh, skills, upskilling, through training, feeling supported in knowing how to do it is absolutely vital. Um, but there's something about having the right value set, so I think um, leaders need to think about recruitment in that as well, um, because it, this is about the core values of really believing that everybody is equal and we all deserve to be treated equally and treat each other as human beings, and um, that's that's the future of, of health and social care, really. Um, and the other third ingredient is it has to be by design, it has to be in the DNA of what you do, so the processes, procedures, recruitment, contracts, whatever, policy, strategy, it needs to be written in so that it can't be ignored, um, but we, I, I often say um, strategy, uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast is Henry Ford quote, because um, the culture is the most important thing at the end of the day, but you do need those policies and strategies to, to kind of hold it in place. Um, and there will be challenges. I mean, the essential methods are involve me. It's a different kind of team. We've already said that. It's about relationships, about being kind. It's about understanding that we are all working towards them. Jo mentioned earlier, the board have a different perspective now. They no longer see these professionals around the table as enemies. Um, <laughs> as Jo's looking at me with her eyebrow. Um, it's, it's seeing that people are genuinely, you know, passionate and trying to make positive change. Jo's waving at me. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that the board is made up of people who use the services, like myself, working, and I literally work alongside the director and deputy director of adult social care. They have become people, and I've become something, not just a number to them. Yeah, that's really true. It's really important, what, you know, because there's change in both groups of people, really. Yeah, we, like I said earlier, we have a different, we all bring a different perspective to the table and we're all starting to listen. It's seeing each other as human beings instead of just someone behind a closed door or like you say a number um, and actually when we see each other as human beings and treat each other with kindness and, and build on relationships uh, all the other stuff falls in place because you, 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 you can't build a positive relationship unless you think about making it meaningful, <coughs> making, it, making it accessible so that's why that's the, the, the all, root of it. All about communication yeah. and keeping the lines of communication open. So there are some challenges. Um, this hasn't gone <laughs> without challenges. Uh, time, it just comes up time and time again. Um, it is a challenge because 
people working in councils have an awful lot to do in a very short space of time um, and there's all sorts of processes that they have to go through, there's a lot of bureaucracy. Um, permission is ultimately um, with that senior leadership in place and saying yes this is okay we're going to try and do this differently um, is absolutely vital. Um, but that kind of understanding and awareness, understanding of our unconscious biases, um, uh, awareness that we're getting it wrong, being, being able to hold our hands up and say, actually, that didn't work. Let's do this in a different way. Um, let's look at what the root cause of this is. Is it something to do with the system? Is it something we can change? If we can, how? And then the complexity. There are so There is just so much complexity in the health and social care system uh, anywhere in the country, even people working inside the system don't fully understand how it works and it changes all the time. So you're managing all of that complexity under quite a lot of strain. Um, so communication is quite difficult. It's very, very easy just to kind of point fingers and blame each other, um, but that just uh, doesn't get you anywhere because then you're not saying, okay, let's let, let's stop that, let's, let's look at what we can do together, let's look at what strengths we've got, let's try to treat each other that relationship yeah do you want to add anything um, about the challenges because you were involved throughout um, as well, from from an outsider perspective <laughs> well i guess when we started um when the program started there was quite poor uh, there was quite a sort of relations between the community and the council had hit kind of a low point so we were building from quite a kind of low base in a way and it's and it's quite amazing i think what's happened since but it's you know it, it has had its difficulties and it is you know the county council is a massive organization very com and a very complex organization but i think we should we've got quite a lot more to say so we, we, okay. should, we, should, we should all right keep going let's move think, on then and we've got quite a few questions as well so so i so I so, skip through some of these yeah a bit then. yeah um, but yeah, I think just quickly that it's really important to be getting feedback. Um, but we have we've, we've we've had quite a lot of feedback from external organisations, which helps us recognise we're on track. And that's important when you're trying to do co-productions. It's quite nebulous. Mm. It's really difficult to make a plan for co-production. And of course, local authorities want plans. They plan until. It also builds confidence, home. doesn't it? It, it does. Builds confidence in the whole system. I it think. does. So you you start to think okay we're on the right track so that that's there's some examples there of, of some of the uh, feedback that we've had and then if we can go to the next slide do you want to say something about that? yeah so i mean one of the i think really interesting things about the oxfordshire work was that there was we decided to evaluate it from right from the beginning we wanted to be able to measure the change and sort of like have you know, really sort of monitor it. So there was, we we co-produced uh, an evaluation model, um, which involved uh, working with some peer researchers. So we recruited two peer researchers from Sky's co-production network. So they weren't Oxfordshire residents. So they were sort of kind of, a, you know, they had some sort of independence really. Um, and they did all the focus groups, the interviews, the observations, and all that sort of thing that we did on the evaluation. Um, and we also had an annual staff survey as well. Um, and then there was a lot of monitoring and activity that Oxfordshire, you know, the, the co-production team did. Um, but one of the important things about the evaluation was that right at the beginning, we worked on setting some aims and that was like that sort of that we were going to measure so this was like if you go back to the seven shifts it was like what 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 sort of how could we measure or what what change would we see if if we did make this shift towards co-production what do we want to do and so we came up with four aims which we haven't got a slide for but they were embedding co-production in everything that we do um improving services for people who use other social care um Creating better relationships with uh, between the, the county council service providers, people who use services, and families, and then having some influence and impact beyond social care, so in a wider sort of system. And I think what the report shows is that um, there's been movement and uh, next slide. Yeah, 
there's been change on uh, all, all of the aims. And if you look back at the seven shifts as well, a lot of the seven shifts have, we've made, or the Oxfordshire have made progress on all of those. So it's really quite impressive. And I think. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I think, I, uh, um, and we're going to bring out uh, the, um, we're going to publish the evaluation report soon, sort of shortly. I, th I would say, hopefully, this 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 month. Uh, this month yeah. No pressure, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the success. This, we're still on that slide. Yeah, the successes of the program. I mean, like I was saying just now, you, you it's difficult to plan for co-production. So even though we co-evaluated the you know, co-production Oxfordshire group co-evaluated what the aims would be. They are, they're quite broad um, and we hoped that we would get you know, a vast number of more people involved in co-production and maybe achieve a certain number of projects and you can see by the, the figures on there that um, that's, gr that's grown massively um, but you know, we, we couldn't have planned for that. Um, but more importantly you know, the confidence of the board and the influence of the board and those relationships that the impact of that is sometimes it's the small things and what we're measuring is whether people feel like they understand the council, whether they feel connected to the council, what, whether they feel like they actually have a say and a, a more power over their, their existence and that that's some of the stuff that, that is difficult to put down in a, in a, in a numbers on a survey. Um, did you want to add something, Joe? No, I was reading the questions, and mm. somebody's asked Donna Egan, have the policies changed because of co-production? The answer is yes. Mm. We have made changes. You know, going back to the earlier slide of the moving into adulthood, that's a policy that's completely been changed because it's been re evaluated and changed and gone to a business model purely because of co-production. The older people's strategy, that's changed because of co-production. So in answer to that question is yes. And maybe not all strategies and policies, but it's increasingly so. It is, it is increasing. And then our corporate plan, the, organ the whole organisation, each organisation has a corporate plan. You can see it on our website and that's got co-design and co-production written into it. And somebody's asked if the measures of success were co-produced. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely yeah. And, if, and then somebody else has asked whether how to how did we get people onto the board from all levels? Well, that's a constant battle, but word of mouth through all the other um, voluntary sector, we have a vast amount of people from all sorts of different backgrounds using all sorts of different services. And it's growing because it, we started with just adult social care, and now we have a representative, uh, you know, a member of staff from commissioning. Um, a member of staff from Adult Social Care Frontline Services, we have someone from the Clinical Commissioning Group and we now have Children's Services as well um, on the board every month and very recently more people are asking to join from uh, planning, place, transport, customer services. So it's just, it feels like all the work that we've done over the last two years, suddenly there's this kind of tidal wave of movement and it's rippling out. And one of my colleagues said something really lovely who works on the strength-based stuff, Alan. Hi, Alan. Um, he said, you know that it's working when you've kind of lost control of it and you don't know what's going on anymore because it's <laughs> rippled out. It's rippled out so far that everybody's on board and they're doing it. The yeah. conversations we're having with people now, I had a meeting with our waste team last week. They were so keen. It's very different to when we started and people were quite mm. a little bit reluctant, a little bit scared, don't really quite know what this new thing is that we are asking us to change something else. We're already change fatigued, all local authorities are. And now people are really catching on and saying, okay, we know this is the way the way forward. But that's all people working at the council. Yeah. What I'm saying is also that there are hundreds of people like me. I don't work for the council and there are hundreds of us that sort of are involved either as champions and some on the board and it has rippled outwards within the community. Yeah, and there's other people in the community doing it outside mm. of us as well, and yeah. we're starting to overlap and say, how can we learn from each other? There's lots of pockets of um, people doing fabulous co-production that aren't, you know, aren't within our group. But, yeah. Should we, we should, should we do, do a little bit? Sorry. Sorry. Should we? Yeah. Should I? Should we go on to Sky Sky's role and then yeah. we can just take questions? Is that? Yeah. So it's move, move on the slides. If you want. 
one more thing. Okay, I just just before we just open it to sort of more informal questions, I just wanted to just talk a bit about Sky's role. So we we um, as we said, we work with stakeholders to develop the program aims, and then we supported at the very beginning the setup of co-production team, so we help with the recruitment of the co-production team, the board and the champions network and then we also developed training with the co-production team and with other stakeholders and with the board uh, and we trained quite a lot of staff and then the other thing we did was conduct the program evaluation and so I just wanted to just to close just to say a little bit about the, what the evaluation recommended so next slide um, so I mean Things are really happening in Oxfordshire. You could really tell that from what you're hearing and what you're seeing. And I think it's, you know, a really good sign when sort of you hear about some co-production going on in the, within the system, and that was nothing. You know, you didn't. You, there was nothing to do with you. It's just sort of, it's happening everywhere. They seem to be riding on a, a wave, but they're still. You know, you never get to the point where you can just be complacent and sort of sit back and think, yeah, we've cracked co-production. So the there were quite a few recommendations. Um, one was that things take time. Uh, culture change takes time. Um, that there is a, that there is a tension between co the sort of co-productive uh, ethos of sharing power and equality, um, and the council's legal responsibilities and public accountability. Um, that there is this issue of staff needing time to co-produce and that's a real barrier because people are so hard pressed there's so many pressures that you know so that that's that's really important that staff need more reassurance that they can be given time um the co-production team is really key in all of this and they s sort of support facilitate the board and the champions and without them none of this would happen and it, it you know originally we thought or I think Oxford had thought that maybe there could come a time when the team wasn't needed, but I think that's it's got to like five to ten years rather than sort of two to five. Um, I think having clear roles and sort of having clarity around the role of the champions and the role of the board, um, there's always a need to keep increasing the diversity within everybody who's involved and seeing who's excluded, why aren't some, you know, are there groups that aren't. Um, co-producing and why aren't they involved um, and what can we do about that um, and then I think where co-production has worked best in Oxfordshire it's been where there's been already local service user led or disability organisations because that means that there's a network to draw on and people already there's already people that you can co-produce with um, so there needs to be more support for the growth of local service user and carer and disabled people's organisations. Um, and then I think also we said that to continue to monitor progress and evaluate the programme is really important. Mm -hmm. So those are just those are just a few things. So we can go on to the final contact slide, but we've got a whole raft of questions coming through. <laughs> so, so if you do want to get in touch with us, that's our inbox there. Um, you can find us on Twitter uh, or Yammer if you're internal. Um, please look out for our co-production festival. That's a link there to our video for, or from last year's festival if you want to watch it. And um, uh, there's your contact details there. Yeah, if anyone wants well, to find so. out about yeah. free resources from Sky, but also um, our training and consultancy offer, yeah, please, please get in touch. Right. So, um, You've got lots of questions. Lots of questions. Um, there was one sort of question, um, how is co-production different from ongoing engagement and communication with people? So that's kind of, do you, I mean, I would always say it's kind of apples and pears, really, and it's a big difference between just uh, consultation or engagement is just sort of talking to people and asking them what they think, whereas co-production is involving people right from the beginning and sort of, you know, it's not about an organisation communicating with people, it's it's about involving them in the design and the delivery and the monitoring of services. Um, and there, was another, there was another question from uh, Melanie who said, who's paid and who's not? So that's... Mm. So we issue. have a policy, I mean, there aren't that many local authorities that have 
payment policies, but um, a number do, and they vary across the country. But we do have a policy where we say that if, if people are using their time um, and they, they should otherwise be be you know be paid then we we make sure we we reimburse we have a reimbursement policy um and that includes travel and time spent on on any work um and that's and how we as well. yeah, yeah exactly uh, so if somebody for example needs a carer to, to support them to be able to attend then that would be covered as well the board is made up from volunteers as well as people who work for occ so although we do get a nominal amount of money. We're not paid. We are completely independent and not liable to OCC. So as people who use services, we bring the real story to the board. Yeah, it's a reimb it's not it's not salaried, it's a reimbursement. Yeah. So you, you, you get time and travel expenses reimbursed. I hope that answers the question. There was one question, tension between the legal responsibilities and accountability and the desire to share power. Well, if it's all co-produced, there isn't the, the power actually lies in the end user and should do always. It's the end user, the product. If you involve the end user, you're going to do it legally right anyway. And there shouldn't really be any um, accountability and legal responsibility because it's right way to do it you're right but there is we you know the reality of the system uh, of, of local authorities is that there is accountability and, and that's just the legal structure um, it's a tricky one to address but we address it by being open uh, as much as possible being open and transparent I don't think we're quite there fully yet but we're working towards it I think um, some people you know understandably get a bit nervous about Honesty and transparency, but the board, for the board is a very good example. That's a very open forum. Um, nothing is hidden, really. That people will just uh, be honest about what the challenges are, and if the challenge is money, if the challenge is bureaucracy, if the challenge is uh, legal responsibility, ultimately somebody will be accountable. Um, so I think uh, as long as you're being open working shoulder to shoulder to say what what are the issues how can we find solutions to this together then you're a team and as a team you know good teamwork looks like people being open and honest about what the challenges are as well so that's that's how we address it i would say we are it's it's a journey um and we're some way towards that um but demonstrating the, the power of that that way of working it I mean to, 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 to me and the team it's and the board it's just common sense but um, it's all honest communication so if there is a legal issue as long as it's brought out in the open it isn't hidden the accountability it's fine hopefully that sort of answers your question <laughs> yeah because I think um sometimes professionals could be nervous they say well what if you know people who use services dis disagree either with each other or with with what we're doing, you know, and there's a big disagreement. But that, I mean, I think there is going to be conflict um, because, you know, that's why you're co-producing because you don't want to co-produce and just be sort of like everybody pats each other on the back and says, we, you know, that there is going to be that. But I think it's also like how do you, um, what happens when staff disagree with one, one another and, you know, what about that or conflict between other organisations? And these are things have to be managed in similar similar ways I think yeah I, I, we have done that question I, I saw yeah. it was tough well, yes. to come back on it as well <laughs> Sophia Rogerson how do we ensure that groups whose voices aren't heard very often we I'm co-chairing and I'm the parent of somebody with severe learning disabilities in Oxfordshire so learning disabilities are definitely heard English is a second language actually I don't think we've got anyone on the board with English as a second language I don't think but we do have a lot of diverse people now and we go out to the, the charitable groups yeah asking if people would like to mm. come I think and my life my choice is um, the organization for people with Some early difficulties in this yeah and that's a very powerful organization so, in Oxford, but, really, but so one of the there is a, and they there have is a board a, member don't they there is a key bit of learning actually in this question that uh, as, a, as a group um, working for the last two years um, 
you know, even even when we've had uh, an officer of the council say, right, I really want to do co-production. How do I go out and reach people? Because because that network is just beginning to be built. People don't always know how to do that, and so that has been a challenge. And some people will, you know work really hard to reach out and try to involve people and sometimes it still doesn't work and so the learning from that is the most effective way of of doing it is to go and visit people to go to groups to go directly to people um, invite them to come and see what it is we do um, to go at face-to-face -face, uh, interaction um, is, 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 is yeah there's is a lot most powerful. of questions coming in about sort of excluding Groups, but it's interesting. We have that, mental health on the yeah. board. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. One sort of who's excluded and who's not, and that, and it, and that can mean different things to different people, really. I think mm. so. That there's different. You know, you can be very. I mean, I know that there's somebody with experience of mental health issues on the board and on the team, isn't there? I think. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def definitely, um, and. Um, well, that that's the thing. That any time a challenge comes up um, from the board, then we'll we'll explore it as a group um, and say, okay, well, how how do we make that happen? But I mean, the word excluded is an interesting one because um, a lot of this is about willingness as well. Um, I was discussing in a, in a in a in a group yesterday in the Social Care Futures event um, about you know there's there's, there's also um, the complexity of this is that it's not just council officers and residents who use social care, but it's everybody in the community. And people in the community are so used to having a, diff a certain type of relationship with us. Um, so it's breaking down all of those barriers. It's it's starting to develop a new culture, a new relationship, a new way of working. Um, and so there's two key things there. There's awareness of that, and there's willingness to start acting, responding in a different way, and it's not just the professionals, it's everybody. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, there's something about willingness rather than exclusion. I, I know that it's important to recognise that some, some groups are seldom heard, but the most effective way of, of including people is speak to them. We are constantly trying to expand out into the community to get the people that don't normally join in but like Danny says, it is very, very difficult to get some people. I think it's things like the festival, I think, are part of that, though, because the festival is so access accessible and fun and sort of, you know, not, you, you know, it was very welcoming and not, you know, it wasn't sort of like when you go into a council office and, it, you know, it's an office and, people, you know, it was just completely different. Um, I think there's been some questions about expenses and payments policies from people. I mean, we do have uh, information on Sky's website. There's a there's a guide to making payments to people who are on benefits on the website. And um, OCC has a policy that actually went through co-production. I wanted to come back on Sonia's question about the difference between ongoing engagement and communication with people. I know you answered it really well, Pete, but there's, there were some other thoughts in my mind about this. Um, because a lot of organisations in health and social care do have posts in place which are responsible for engagement. And our organisation has um, historically a really strong engagement team. Um, you know, they run uh, groups for um, young people. Um, they run our formal consultations because, of course, we have a duty to formally consult on various things. Um, but they've, you know, historically been very, very good at running engagement events, etc. Um, but the difference really with co-production is saying not just talking to people, not just keeping people informed, not just asking people what do you think about the work that we're doing here, but sit alongside us. And that's where my point about willingness comes up. Um, because if, if for this to really work across the organisation, our organisation, but any other organisation who wants to, to start doing this, it's about having a completely different relationship with the community. Um, putting resource into strengthen um, resources in the community and having um, a much bigger network contact, regular contact with the community mm -hmm. so that you build reference groups. So each department, it's built into the DNA of each department that they just have a group of people that they have mm -hmm. an ongoing relationship and work as a team with. Yeah. Um, that's the, that's the yeah, vision. That's one the of the um, 
in the seven shifts, we said to have a co-production board, but we should have said have a co-production board and a net and a wider network. Yeah. I think that was sort of like. Oh, I did that anyway. So, yeah, I know, <laughs> and, that, and that happened anyway. But that is really important. I think we've just got like about five minutes before the hour's over, so I don't know if there's any other questions that people want to try and answer. Or I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of stuff about the military coming through, but I don't think we've got the knowledge to answer questions about. That, but it's a really um, What's very the interesting. I don't know how do we ensure that the people in the military are not disadvantaged because they have to move around. I mean, um, I think people are. I think that you know, our housing and planning people and, and people who are working with military would would look at supporting that. So if if they want to look at co-producing that, um, I visited Essex County Council last week and they have some veterans on their board and I'd, I'd love to to look at that as well for us. That's definitely something. That, so it's it's about yeah not excluding anybody definitely um, that's not that's not the idea here so it's an open open forum and a willing if people are willing to get involved then that then we'd welcome them. I answer Sonia's question for how do we build those relationships with adult social care rather than across the whole council. Um, the whole co-production board started with adult social care, so that actually is the most open and transparent project that we've got so far. Um, the relationships between end users is improving all the time. I don't understand fully the question, Sonia. Um, how do you build those relationships just in adult social care rather than across the whole council? Which we, means the other way around. We started yeah. in adult yeah. social care because you have to start somewhere and that's just where our funding was sat because the senior leader that wanted to make this shift and took it to cabinet and got it signed off was our director of adult social care. So we started there, but very quickly the challenge came from our board. Why just adult social care? Why not health? Why not schools? Why not transport? So it's rippled out very quickly. Like we said earlier, you can't actually just have adult social care without um, health, without transport, without all the rest of it. So. But if, you're, if your question is more about how do you build it's relationships, just it's just like how, as you'd build any other relationship. Yeah. It's kindness, treating each other as humans. Um, we, we we do have quite a lot of guidance on this in our handbook. Um, use of language. I think you have to start in a manageable way, really. You have to start from where you are and where the organisation is. Um, listening. You know, not and listening yeah. to the end user. Communication. It's all to do with communication. Um, when we first started, there was definitely an us and them. Even coming into the board when I first started, you know us and them. It's changing the whole concept that actually you're all working together for the best outcome. Yeah, and you yeah. have in some ways starting small is good because then you have a good example of it, of it working yeah. and, and very quickly it ripples out. If you, if you go back to the slide with the three key ingredients, if you've got that senior leadership really driving it, if you've got a, a commitment to actually changing it in policy and strategy and whatever the third one was, I can't remember. Um, uh, it, it really being driven changing the culture, um, then then it just ripples out. Like you say, mm. you start you start to lose sight of it. I think we're we're getting to the end. We've got a couple minutes. of minutes left, so I think we're going to say thank you very much for everybody who's some um, stayed with us um, for this hour. I hope you found it interesting. Um, it's been trying to follow the messaging has been really. Amazing, actually. There's lots of sharing of examples and sorry if we didn't get discussions and stuff. Um, but uh, I hope we've given you a flavour of what's going on in Oxfordshire and um, that that's been inspiring and um, informative. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, thank you. As a parent, it's been a great journey. <laughs> yes, and and me as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, goodbye.